What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the walkthrough. We're on episode 14. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out from the previous episode, since we did get to the Cathedral of Manus Meter, however you say that, um, there is a like coffin right here, kind of in the swampy area right around the cathedral. Um, what it is, is it actually functions as the mausoleums that you see in the base game that allow you to duplicate your remembrance. Only this is just there for free. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to kill it or anything like that. It's just there and you can duplicate remembrances um, from the base game and the DLC as well. So just want to point that out. It's right in this area. Um, there's three of them in the game. This is the first one that we passed by. So just wanted to call that out since I uh, neglected to in the previous episode. But for now, here we are at Church District entrance. And so we're going to handle kind of the back side of the Shadow Keep. So this is a completely different area that was not accessible to us before. So uh, right here, we can hop right over to the rooftop. So make sure you jump because if you walk off, you're probably going to fall to your death because anything this is. Yes, this is water, but yes, this is also souls and you can't swim. So over here, we have the crab eggs and we're going to go this direction on the roof. There's going to be a couple items up here as well. Another item right here, strip of white flesh. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump across. We want to get on this kind of stone ring. And you're going to see something that's kind of lurking under the water. I know it seems kind of intimidating, um, but it's not going to get you. So don't worry about it for now. Um, it's actually an ulcerated tree spirit that we're going to fight later. Now we're going to hop over here. Got ourselves a great grave glove wart. Now we're going to go back. Uh, to where we were before. Hop, hop. We're going to make our way around uh, the rest of this roof that we were just on before. And I'm holding sprint this whole time making these jumps. To make sure you jump, you're jumping at full speed, otherwise you might fall short. At certain spots. All right, pick up the thin beast bones, and then we're going to hop over here So uh, to this broken building. So you want to make sure that you jump off of one of these kind of raised, I guess it's like a window, um, a roof for, for a window. So jump over, and you see there's an item over here. So right here, they're going to spawn some uh, flame enemies that are going to explode if you get too close to them. So they kind of commit kamikaze here. We're going to pick up the uh, the fireproof pickled liver. So now we're just going to run up this roof. And hop over to this segment. And then we're going to jump over to this next roof right here. There's going to be a uh, fire knight on this roof. Go ahead and take him out. A charged heavy as he's getting up. That'll take him out. Special works very well. Knocks him back. Um, so we got the um, the Mesmer Ember. We're just going to go forward. There's not a gap here, so you don't need to jump right here. Slumbering Egg. Now the next thing is there's going to be another one of these uh, mysterious creatures in the water. But for now, we got to hop into, hop over here. Let's take us up to the next roof. And then what you want to do is there's this hole here in the roof. You want to line yourself up with this rafter and then just walk straight off. And then there's an item over there that we're going to get. Just carefully traverse because if you fall you're gonna die stormhawk feathers i can just take these over here to this platform and then um so what you want to do is you drop through this hole and then we're going to go back this way kind of towards the eastward direction Circle around. There's going to be a door that's actually locked, but we have the key. And the reason why we have the key is because there are two invasions from the same NPC. One here at the Church of the Crusade. This was actually the second invasion. The first invasion we'd had here in um, the Belly Rat Tower Settlement. There was an area where we encountered, it, encountered him here. And 
after beating both of those invasions, you get the prayer room key. We have to uh, sit through this dialogue here. I have met many who would threaten or distress thee, and quelled each and all. And I hereby swear to never cease. So please grant me thy grace. Leave me with my solitary light. Okay, so we can talk to him. This is Fire Knight Quayline. That's his name. Queen Marika, take not from me my... So we can use an Iris of Grace or an Iris of Oculation. If you use an Iris of Grace, he gives you, uh, you get his Spirit Ashes. If you get use the Iris of Oculation, you get a great sword, a uh, great sword from him. I'm going to use the Iris of Oculation. And so for those of you who don't remember, we got the Iris of Grace um, under here. When we, when we took the elevator in the storehouse and went down to get to this direction, we got the Iris of Grace. The Iris of Oculation we got from this fort of Reprimand. And uh, when we went, to, there, was a, there was kind of a basement area where there was an uh, uh, enemy that we killed that gave us the Iris of Oculation. That's, that's where we... We're actually about to get another Iris of Grace... And another iris of oculation. So uh, use one. You pick which one you want. There, I chose the sword. Um, so now we're gonna go back out and around. There's gonna be a couple fire knights over here. Got the lightning proof pickled liver. So over here. We have Rune of an Unsung Hero. Gives you a pretty, pretty hefty amount of runes. This guy, um, he should turn around and we should be able to backstab him. Or if he just patrols in this direction, we'll just be able to backstab him this way. There we go. Not bad. So we can turn right here or right here. We're uh, going to continue straight down this hallway. Ember of Mesmer. Be another Fire Knight back here. If you're crafty, you should be able to get a backstab on him as well. Yeah, he turns down this path, which we're not going to go down this path till a bit later. Perfect. All right, so this is a bit of a tricky jump. There's nothing in this room. That's a future elevator. But what we're going to do here is this is for a Skadutri Fragment. So what you want to do is you see this statue. The uh, Skadutri Fragment is in the hand. What you want to do is you kind of want to line yourself up with the arm and sprint and jump and overshoot the item. Try to aim for the arm. It's easiest to land on the arm. So like this, the camera just tried to kill me right there. But... Uh, <laughs> we're alive. Land it on the arm. So then just scoot down, pick up the item, Skadu True Fragment. And then what we're going to do now is run and jump back over to the ledge. Perfect. Um, and then what we're going to do now is just kind of take this room around. And then this is, I said we were going to take this later. We went straight past. We got the item off of that uh, corpse over there. So what we're going to do now is now we're going to take this path. There are a few bats around here. More of a nuisance than anything else at this point. And my uh, monitor keeps flickering, so I need to like adjust the cable or something because that is driving me nuts. Um, there we go. Hopefully that works. Okay, so follow this path. Make sure you hop over this gap because if you don't, you're going to fall and die. Ask me how I know that. Over here, there's a little alcove. There's another bat it drops down, so take care of it. Hefty beast bone. Now what we're going to do is climb up this ladder to the top. And then this lever allows us to drain the water. Will give us access to more areas in this section.
And there we have it. More for us to explore. Fun times ahead. Okay, so what we can do now is drop down where we climbed up that ladder. Now that the water's gone, we don't immediately die if we fall into this section. The so drop down. Somber five. All right, so time to mark some stuff. I think right here we got an item. Right here we got a sight of grace. Here we have another item, and then there's another item kind of against this wall. And here we're going to fight an ulcerated tree spirit. So. Onwards we go. Well, pickled turtleneck. I think that's for uh, increased stamina regeneration. And here we got the Sight of Grace. And then outside this big ring, you know, we got a, a glove word on top of it. But outside this big ring, there's a couple crabs. Pick this up. We're not going to go inside yet because over here against the wall, there's another item, but it's going to be a giant crab ambush. So, heavy attacks on this thing. Pick them out. All this for some crab eggs. So, in here, we're going to have there's an item right there against the tree. And then um, we're going to fight an ulcerated tree spirit in here. Which is that thing that was swimming around in the water before. So I do like to fight these guys locked on. Watch out for the grab attack. The grab attack is very well telegraphed, fortunately. So um, it's pretty easy to dodge. Here it comes. See, he, oh, he backs away, opens his mouth, and like lunges at you. It's pretty easy to recognize. And that's, that, that is his most dangerous move, is that grab attack. So here we got an opportunity for a... Critical that I could not get because his head was in the wrong spot. That is just too bad. Here's his grab attack. Dodge right through it. Almost got him. Got another critical, but just went ahead and flipped the R1 for the kill. If we're getting him, we get the Mantle of Thorns. I believe that's an incantation. Yeah. Covers you in thorns that cause bleed buildup. And against the tree, have a somber five. So, what we're going to do now is climb up these stairs here. And this is an elevator shortcut back to the first side of grace. Just thought I'd show you guys. There's our first grace. You can rest up here if you need to replenish stuff. So what we're going to do now... Is there... There's a rune in this building. There's another tree spirit, like, right here. And there's some more loot, like, right around here. There's a couple pickups, and then there's some more pickups in this structure as well. The only way in this structure, the first thing that I marked is right here, just traveling kind of northwest from where that elevator was, going through the main entrance, and there are some crabs in here. You can fight them if you wish. I'm just going to get the rune and bail. So the second one isn't fighting for some reason. He didn't care about me, but this other one came out and he's all mad about it. So I might take him out because I don't want him interrupting me when I am trying to fight the Ulcerated Tree Spirit. So right up next to him, do a couple charged heavies. That takes him out. All right. So out here, the next Ulcerated Tree Spirit is going to come up, like right here. Pretty much same as before. 
And this is the, the second one of two. So after this one, we're done with these in this area. And they don't respawn. There we go. Lots of charged heavies. Um, dang it. Get get the, uh, the staggers that I just whiffed on that one, unfortunately. Nope, he's doing his... Nope, I thought he was doing his grab there, but he wasn't. There's his... Nope, that wasn't his grab either. There's his grab. Just make sure you don't get hit by the grab. The grab is... I don't think it's instant death, but... It's... It's a hefty amount of damage, so you don't want to get hit by it. Nope, he's doing his AoE. I was too close to do anything about it anyways. Alright, just a sliver of HP left. That's when they're the most dangerous. All right. But victory is ours when we get an Iris of Oculation. So we utilize the Iris of Oculation to get that um, great sword back there. But for killing him, we get another one. Okay. So we got to pick up here for some Rada fruit. Another pick up here for some string. And I think there's one more. Yes, there is. Grab eggs. Very high quality stuff. All right, take this out, take this out. We've already got those. Here, got a couple more pickups. Some Kukri. And a smithing stone. Okay, so now we're headed is back through kind of this circle and then there's a big um, chapel that we can now gain access to with the water drain. And there's going to be an elite fire knight here that kind of summons those kamikaze fire dudes. So he's probably going to be our first priority here once we walk in. Run on back and kill him. He is a bit beefier than most of the other fire knights we've fought so far. You see he's got a pretty hefty amount of HP. And of course now you got these guys to deal with on top of it all. Knocked him back too though. Yeah, kind of annoying. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to rest before this encounter if you're low on supplies. There we go. Took him out. And the Death Mask Helm, I'm pretty sure, is a guaranteed drop for killing him. So all the way in the back. Or the front, I guess. Have the Shadow Sunflower. And then in this corner over here is an elevator that takes us back up to where that's kind of near where that Merica statue was where we got the Skadu Tree fragment. We have to hop over. We killed a Fire Knight right around here. And that's the way forward to the next area that we're going to get to in just a bit. And there's the Merica statue that we got the Skadu Tree fragment from. So we're going back down. Just wanted to show you that shortcut. We're going to be taking it a bit later as well. So behind this Merica statue, you have the Fire Knight Seal. That in, uh, enhances your, like, if you have a, a incantation type build and you're using a lot of the Mesmer Fire type stuff, it enhances those. Okay. So nothing down here. So we're going to go this way. Kind of towards the northeast, we're headed down this path right here. We're going to go up the stairs first. There's a cookbook up here for us. That will allow us to ca uh, craft golden grease, which will greatly imbue your weapon with holy damage. So now we go through here. So there's two NPCs that I'm aware of where you can give the Iris of Oculation or the Iris of Grace to. So the first one was the um, 
the Fire Knight uh, Quay line, which we just did. And then there's going to be another one later where you have the same option. So the game gives you two irises of grace and two irises of oculation. But you have to pick one or the other with each of those NPCs. So um, as with some other quest lines in the, in the DLC here, uh, you have to do multiple playthroughs if you want everything. Because there's a couple, couple, couple junction points where you have to pick one or the other and you can't get both. All right, get the grace down here. I'm going to level up. So you'll put this one into endurance, which ever so slightly raises my stamina and max equip load. But since I'm not getting that much benefit from leveling up strength anymore, since I've already passed the soft cap of 55, I'm kind of distributing to other stats that'll help me out. Not very much, but still will be of a slight help. So go down this path. We're going to go across the bridge. Right in front of this statue of America, we have our second Iris of Grace. So we got another Iris of Oculation from one of those ulcerated tree spirits, and we just got it the second Iris of Grace. So you should have two of each, although we did just use one of the Ocul Irises of Oculation. We got America's Rune. Worth a lot of runes. And right in front of us, we have a boss. So this boss is weak to fire and uses holy. So I'm going to equip the Blasphemous Blade for this. Taker's Flame works very well against this boss. Um, whoops, I did not mean to take my Physic Flask off. Uh, I'm going to take this Talisman off and put a Holy Damage Negation Talisman on. Alec Drake Talisman plus two will work just fine. And we're going to go on in. This is a giant evil sunflower, so... Summon Mimic as soon as you're able. I'm going to buff up. So he does a lot of attacks where he, where he swings his arms. Like so. He also does attacks where he'll put flames on the ground. Or, th or rather thorns on the ground. Um, and those will cause pretty hefty bleed buildup. So watch out for those. As I said, Taker's Flame works very well. You can do damage. The most damage you do straight to like the uh, to the flower. Um, but you can also do damage to the stem. But it's not as much damage. As I said, he's weak to fire. And I like to call this the infomercial boss because you think you've got him. Right when you think you're good. But wait, there's more. We got a second one. Taker's Flame works very well. So this one dashes at you three times. So you gotta dodge through the dash or you can block it with your shield. But I prefer to dodge even though I missed the dodge there. Go me. Um, so, as I said, his weak point is the actual flower bud, or the actual, like, flower, the sunflower in, in the front. And there's his thorns attack. Um, and if he bleeds you with it, it'll do pretty hefty damage. Um, and then you can attack a stem. Taker's Flame, though, if you hit it just right, it'll hit both the flower part and the stem for a pretty sizable amount of damage. He does an attack where he likes to sl he'll 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 use holy damage on the flower and he'll slam it down for a grab. So watch out for that. That does quite a bit of damage. There we go. See see how much damage that did. That's because I hit both the flower and the stem with Taker's Flames. So I need to uh, re up my my FP. And of course, remember it's the infomercial. But wait, there's more. Here we go. There's a third one. And this one has a pretty sizable holy AOE. There it is. Back away. I was just out of range out of it. So he, he like, is incapacitated for a second after doing that, fortunately. But, um... Let's see, I'm just going to take some shots at the stem for a minute. More thorns. Back away. Do some Taker's Flames here. And that got him. So yes, Taker's Flames is works very, very well against this boss. For killing him, we get the Remembrance of the Shadow, Sunflower, and Mikola's Great Rune. Very good stuff. There's also a Grace down here. And I have another... I, I have enough runes for another uh, level here. It wouldn't be a bad idea, especially if you're using Taker's Flames, to bring in another Blue Flask with you. 
The Staker's Flames does use up quite a bit of FP. I uh, need to level up. But here, I'm just going to bring my decks up to an even 50. All the way in the back, there's some um, Shadow Sunflower pickups that you can get. At least I think there is. Should be. Yeah, they're over here. Straight. Straight in the back. But not too bad of a boss as long as you use the uh, the right tools, namely fire. All right. So with that, we're gonna work back to the sunken chapel. And put our normal equipment back on. A couple um, important things. You know, we got the Mikola's Great Rune and the Remembrance there. So if you read the Remembrance, it gives us a bit more information on the Skadu Tree. Uh, the power of its namesake can be unlocked. The finger reader. The Skadu Tree is the shadow is the shadow of the Erd Tree, born of dark notions that bear no sense of order, that twist and bend its stalk, rendering it brittle. So, you know, the uh, Erd Tree people that follow the the Erd Tree in the base game, you know, th those are the folks of that that um, follow the golden order and that type of stuff. And this is the shadow of the Erd Tree, and so this bears no sense of order. Um, and therefore, as you can see, when you look at the, the Skadu tree, it is definitely not as vibrant looking as the Ur tree. Now, there are some people that have done a lot of research and what they do is they've overlaid this map with um, with the lands between and they like put it right here in the center. And when they put it in the center, like the Skadu tree is right here next to the Ur tree, which it is the shadow of the Ur tree. Right. But when you put the, the shadow, the, the shadow realm map like right here, it does kind of line up. Um, pretty well. I don't know if that's intentional. I would think it probably is, um, but it's pretty cool if you want to look something like that up by where they overlay the two maps. It's uh, it's actually quite compelling. Um, so anyway, uh, there's that. And then we also got the uh, Mikola's Great Rune. Um, Regains not but the power to resist charms. A broken and bereft of its broken and bereft of its bounty retains not but the power to resist charms. Mikola set off for the tower and shrouded by shadow. The shadow keep abandoning everything, his golden flesh, his binding strength, even his fate. So that aligns with what we've been seeing at each of these crosses where he's shedding um, shedding parts of himself in an effort to bury the original sin, to embrace the whole of it and be reborn as a new god. So that's his that's his goal with all of this, is to uh to shed everything and then um as a result, we'll be able to be uh, reborn um, as a new god. So, um, very interesting. Gives us a little bit of more insight into Mikola's kind of motives and what he's up to. Uh, so, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to... Remember I showed you that elevator that goes back up to where we got the Skadu Tree fragment. So, now we're going to take that elevator and take the path. It's going to take us to a new section of the Shadow Keep. There is a fire knight. Sneak up on him. It's the same one that just uh, respawned. So over here is where we're going next. This is going to take us back to a place that should look familiar. First we had a Long elevator ride up. There we go. We have arrived. Now we're back in the specimen storehouse. So remember this guy over here that was kind of sniping us and we couldn't get over to this platform? Well, now here we are. 
Got a somber nine right there next to him. And a sight of grace for us to unlock. Gonna head over here. Got a fire knight and some enemies. I'm gonna take the enemies out. Oh, so I don't alert the fire knight. And I know I showed you the uh, this bow skill that fires eight at a time. It doesn't work particularly well against the fire knights because the fire knights are are pretty small. They're stature wise, they're not very large, and so it fires the eight arrows horizontally. So not very many of them will hit a fire knight if you try to shoot a fire knight with it. So so the 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 skill for this bow where it shoots shoots the eight arrows horizontally is definitely better for for larger enemies. Sneak up on him. Backstab. Oh, he barely had some, like, a few HP left there. All right, we got the carrion thrusting shield. And then we picked up the uh, fireflies back there off of this, this guy. All right, so now we got to climb another ladder. First, we had an elevator. Now we have a ladder. All the way up. My first time in the Shadow Keep, like the first part of Shadow Keep, I saw this ladder from afar, and I tried for a long time trying to figure out how to get here, only to find out that you couldn't get get here from you know the main part of the uh, storehouse. You had to go find an alternate way in, and I wasted a lot of time trying to find this. But go so up the very top. Got another fire knight. We can uh, backstab him and push him off the ledge, basically. Up the stairs. Another fire knight up here. On his patrol route. I'm just gonna go on and kill him. I don't wanna wait for him. Alright, here we got some fire coils. Got some ghost enemies over here. Here we got a Ghost Glove War 3. Here we have ourselves a new incantation, Fire Serpent. So now what we need to do is there's this hole in the wall. This takes us back outside. Got a little wooden walkway here. Along the wooden walkway, I have some Shadow Sunflowers. And a blessed bone shard. And this takes us to our next side of grace. This is the loft, which will take us all the way up to the rafters. Um, we just take this up, and there's a bunch of items up here and whatnot that we're going to get. There's a bunch of bats up here as well. So be careful, I mean, because you these, these rafters aren't necessarily super thin as far as walkways are concerned, but it is possible to fall off to your death if you're not careful fighting these things. Probably best to fight them unlocked so that way you don't track them and accidentally swing to a direction that you don't mean to go when the camera shifts. So we have a ladder right here. We're not going to go up it just yet. we got to go back to this item and another bat. Let him come down so you can hit him. Keep my health topped off. Right here, we got some thin beast bones, and now we're going to climb up the ladder. Once we get to the top, we're going to go in kind of like a counterclockwise direction. So think of that as 12 o'clock. We're going to go back 
to six o'clock here. Got another bat up here. Whoop, we both whiffed. Dang it, come down. Ugh, these things are annoying. You have to be a little bit careful fighting them. Around here in this pillar in the center, there's an item right next to it. Somber seven. Go all the way over here for another item. You see there's an item kind of on this gear right there. We're going to drop down and get it. It's bat first. Ugh, both whipped again. And it flies up. So annoying. There we go. So drop down on this gear. Another spell. Wrath from afar. We're going to jump to this little platform that's sticking out. We're going to drop down over here to our right. Really nothing on this platform, but it's just a good spot to drop down. We need to get down here anyway. And then what we want to do here... Uh, next right here is drop on top of this elevator. So just you don't need to jump. You don't need to roll. Just walk off the edge there and then go back. There's going to be a fire knight with his back turned to us so you can sneak up on him. Backstab. Out pretty easy there. Right next to him, we have a rune of an unsung hero. I think that's the second one that we've got. So now what we want to do is ride this elevator. We just jumped on top of it. We want to ride it all the way to the top. And of course, this is a different elevator than the first one we rode up when we got to the loft. Ride it all the way up. And you'll notice. Oh, geez, that guy. Totally just got trolled. Uh, yeah. So he's up there waiting for you. You got to run around and get him real quick. And he's got that spell that knocks you back. I was being so careful. We were, we were doing so good. And of course, in the end, as is so often the case, it's gravity that wins. Some of these bats I'm going to have to fight again because they're going to annoy me when I'm trying to go up these ladders. Camera, was, camera almost killed me again there. Decided to shift while I was running across the raptor there. Okay. Enough of him. Drop back down on this gear. Jump over. Go. The other elevator is the one that's down now. Ride this one to the top. Then when it gets to the top, we're going to want to send it back down and hopefully not get killed again by this fire knight that wants to troll you immediately. Send it back down. Only only send it back down because it's on that side. We, that, we want that side to be down. And you'll see why in just a minute. Now we got this guy. Respectfully, screw you, sir. All right. So now what we want to do is this is the side that we originally had taken up. And this would be the one that would be up right now had I not died the first time. So what we want to do is you want to send this down, back off immediately, don't ride it. And you want to go over to this side. And when this one comes up, you want to jump on the roof. Or just walk off, rather, to the roof. You don't want to jump necessarily. And that takes you up to this item, which now you can jump over. And get uh, Fire Knight Hildy. Hilda, I guess probably called. A spirit summon. Now we're going to turn right. 
go down this year ladder. Pick up the somber eight. And we are home free. That is the loft. So now we can go through here. And there's another elevator that we're going to take down. And then we're going to go follow this walkway. And then there's another big elevator we're going to take down. So look at this view. Pretty cool. So what we're looking at there is this stuff. We haven't been here yet. We got this big ominous looking tower over here as well. All right. So big double doors. They don't open. Frustrating. I know. But it is what it is. We're going to take this all the way down. It is a long way down. It was a long way up, and then it's a long way down. So here we got ourselves another side of grace. Don't go through there yet, because over here we have a scadget tree fragment. Which, this is not enough for us to level up. I think we need one more to level up. And we have a note. Have mercy for the spirited away shamans. So think about that for a second. Think about what happened to the shamans and something that we may have picked up in an area around where things were happening to shamans. This is something for later. We'll do this actually in the next episode. And right through this archway is another boss. And we are also going to do this in the next episode because we're going to go on and wrap things up here. Uh, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. We already took care of one boss. We got the boss down here. So we're going to save this boss for next time. So I uh, really appreciate you guys watching this. Hope you found it very useful in your own playthroughs as well. I've had a, a really good time making these episodes. And um, so you guys uh, take care and we'll see you next time.